Hello and welcome to the Reapers. So, time for another tactical debrief. The mission was uh, Red 4 versus Blue 4. Uh, sorry, Blue 4 versus Red 4. Uh, the big naval mission that we did. Uh, first of all, prudent to point out that we had uh, some troubles, uh, as usual, we always have troubles. Um, I set the carriers moving too fast, and this forced the uh, aircraft, as you saw in the uh, tr the record attempt video, to slide about on the deck of the carrier and cause all kinds of problems. So it took about an hour or probably more to get our planes airborne, rather than 20 minutes it should have took, but that's life, deal with it. Um, apart from that, uh, the mission was we've got a fleet here and a bunch of uh, blue planes. You've got flankers, harriers and F5s that you can take off from carriers with. Here we have red fleet and we've got six red uh, Su-33s there. Uh, there's a tanker there for red, so there's two tankers there for blue, a bit of civilian planes and a target. A bunch of oil rigs and moving vessels as well as gunboats. Um, so, uh, nothing else to say at this moment. Let's uh, fast forward until we start getting some action. Right, so, there was a bit of miscommunication here. Um, oops. So, we told uh, the Reds that we were ready for them to take off, that we were starting. Uh, in fact, uh, there was a miscommunication. We were actually still struggling. Some of us, as you can see, haven't even taken off yet. We're trying to uh, beat the carrier problems to get up. Um, so, these guys have flown all the way over, and we've not even started from our carrier yet. And they can't come and kill us because of whopping great Samnet, as you can see. Um, so, that is annoying, but... That's one of the things that happens when um, we're doing DCS. So we've learned the problem now, so it shouldn't happen again. But there you go, that's life. Uh, so we're going to run that through. I question why they've come to get us, really. Um, I would have thought they'd be here to protect from the target, but whatever. Uh, there were no rules, so they could do whatever they want. Uh, they're in pairs. You've got Wolf Shadow Coffee, Skadrecki, Uderosa, and another pair who look like they're staying back at the ship, uh, which makes sense. Um, you can see we've got uh, Sam's firing them all the way from 30 miles. Wow, that's a big Sam. Don't know what missiles they are, phoenixes I guess or something, but whopping great things. Uh, no chance of hitting obviously, but um, yep, so that's fine, so we'll just run that through. I don't think there's anything to really see there. Lots and lots of missiles going out. They bugger off to a safe distance, which is the proper thing to do, and they're hanging around the um, the target area that they're defending now. Right, so, so we've it took us ages, and once we are taken off, we had to go and... It took, so, it took us so long to get all 12 people off. By the time the last ones were taking off, the first ones were out of fuel, and so they had to go and um, uh, refuel at the tankers. So it took, let me look at the time. The time is uh, one hour and 22 minutes. So it's taken one hour and 22 minutes to get our planes here from the ship up in the air and in a tactical position. Uh, so it's a little bit silly, about an hour longer than it should take, or, or a bit longer. But never mind, this is how it goes. Right, uh, so we've got a uh, hammer that's led by Cap, we've got Sonic Dust, Tignore, Atomic, um, in fact, I'm going to have to zoom in there a bit. I'm going to have to zoom in there a bit. Uh, let's try that again. Cap, Atomic, Sonic Dust, and oh, Signal Ray. Um, and, oh, and Tender as well. Have we got five? Oh, fucking people. Right, so somehow someone's made it into this group who shouldn't have been in there. Uh, if you look at the briefing, there were supposed to be four here and four there, but there's only three here, so someone's accidentally tagged along with us. A hammer. So that was a little bit silly. You can find out who that was. I don't know. And in Buick here, uh, three guys that made it into Buick: uh, Zoidberg, Merlin, and Trash. Back at the base, the Harriers are staying on P led by P Man, and the F5s will be taking off shortly from the carrier. So, God, a while before anything. Wow, Rico has already fired a missile. Now that is possibly a new record. It is a new record. A new record. 63 miles. So let's go and have a look at how when he fired that. That's beaten our record by about 45 miles. So, exact crying position was 71 and a half miles. So that's that's ambitious. So um, slightly over ambitious. You never know. It may have hit. Uh, anyway, let's carry on running that through. Obviously, got a long way before anything happens. So I remember we were doing lots of scanning, looking for targets, and not really finding anything. Um, Regal's on his own. I don't know why he's on his own. He just is. Uh, maybe that's part of the tactics, I guess, but okay, fair enough. Uh, Regal Recall is coming in for attack. Wall Shadow Coffee looked like they're out of gas are going home, and these two are doing a lateral uh, patrol. So, running into Hammer that's got the extra man. Let's see what we do. 30 miles, so we can start doing some action. Let me set this up. So, we've got like that. And like that. So, looks like Tomic is going in first. The rest of us. Uh, Signora and Cap look like they are uh, flanking to the right. I mean, cranking to the right, probably. 
and the atomic is cranking a good 30 or so degrees to the left that's good enough closing up let's uh, go forward a bit 17 miles uh, not sure what, who recalls targeting so I won't guess and that is tender so let's have, let's have a quick look at those shots shall we let's uh, run that through again let's see bosh Okay, um, 10 miles, uh, sorry, 9 miles dead on, perfect. That's a lovely shot from uh, Recall, no complaints with that, at an average angels of 16 or something like that. So, yep, it's just within parameters for an optimal uh, shot. Uh, Tender's cancelling his crank and he's turning in now. Tender is Fox out at 8.3 miles, lovely termination of crank, good shot, had his nice play, play nice and stable, but he's got to get away now, obviously. Scratch that, that missile was actually for cap, so. Um, so it does have a good chance of hitting uh, recall this missile. Let's see. Oh dear, he's cancelled his turn. This is the thing. The Reds never listen to me, and they don't watch these things. They're too stubborn. Right. So anyway, uh, so recall came in here. He tried to dodge a missile by turning. We probably won't get hit now, but he tried to dodge a missile by turning 60 degrees and then just cancelling it. Can't do that. Can't do that unless you're some kind of super maverick from the Hollywood. You just can't go away with that kind of thing. You've got to go a full 180 to beat an incoming missile at a perfect optimal range like that is just really asking for trouble and is way too slow 480 knots uh, none of this is good and he, deserve, he, he died and he deserves rightly the speed was wrong the turn was wrong um, so now let's see how you do it so let's go and see how you do it where's cap okay um, this is what you should do if a missile's coming at you like uh, like I said if you're some kind of super maverick fighter pilot um, like one in a thousand pilots, you can do these silly little jinx and stuff to dodge. Recall's not that, and none of us us, us are, so don't do stupid stuff like that. Right, now Cap's attempt. Look at the speed, much better speed. Uh, nearly 600 knots. And I'm not pulling hard because I know I don't need to because I know his distance from me, so I didn't need to do the hard pull. Yes, I know I say you should do it, but I'm losing altitude and I've gone for a full 180. And there was nothing that missile could do to catch me 600 knots. So that's the difference. That guy at 480 knots, me at 600 knots, me at full 80, full 180 and turn down. Him just, well, a little a minor turn. Anyway, that would never have worked out. Uh, so that's a little bit silly, but this is why we're doing it. We do it to watch and learn. Um, that's that. We're going to scroll it forward until the next section. Stand by. Right. Engagement of some sort here. Skadrecki is going for the record. No, it's only 33 miles. So I guess what they're doing is posturing us, uh, getting radar locks and trying to posture us out. Because uh, we don't know how far that missile is away, so he has to go into a dive. So it's a good way of uh, burning our fuel off from long range, essentially, and just keeping us away from the target. I imagine that's what that was all about. Uh, that's fine. You've got Buick, the three men that made it to Buick, are uh, going to see that, I imagine. And they probably see that missile, and they're now turning in. So it's going to be Zoidberg on Skate Drecky. Let's follow that through, shall we? Right, good work from Skate. Uh, good work from Zoidberg. Good flyer. He'll show you exactly how to turn. A missile's being fired at him. He doesn't know how far it away it is. He doesn't know it's 20 miles away. He thinks it might be closer. Doesn't take any chances. Invert. Lovely build pull. 6G. That's enough for a, a, a missile that's not much of a threat. 650 knots. 700 knots. Perfect. That's how you beat a missile with countermeasures. I should. I should say. Uh, yeah, absolutely perfection there. Doesn't matter if he has to turn away. That's fine. His friends will come in and cover him. Uh, he got a ET out from trash there, but it's, it's a complete waste of a missile. It's 20, 20 miles and a cold target. Uh, it's a little bit silly, obviously. And um, and uh, Uderosa Trade is a 20 mile uh, shot into none of these are kill missiles. They're all just uh, uh, they're all just um, posturing missiles to keep us at bay, basically. Uh, this ET was a bit silly because that doesn't give a warning. We should all be firing. And these are AT stupid, that AT stupid, which all be firing ERs at the moment. No one can hit anyone at 20 miles. Everyone here knows that. Uh, so firing ETs is just pointless. Um, unless someone's stupid enough to run into one, but no one's stupid enough to run into one at, at this level. Uh, anyway, so let's carry on. So a nice bit of um, good tactical play. Everyone's using their jets right apart from that one error. Um, these guys, you know, you see no one's charging after these reds being a dickhead. Everyone's doing it properly. These two saying as wingman pair, wingman pair, covering each other. Nice static chainsaw, um, everything's spot on, nothing to complain about. Right, I get the feeling these guys are RTB, so what we're, go we're going to do now is just um, roll that forward. Negative, we have more action. 
just again, um, point, uh, just a, I wouldn't say pointless, just posturing shots from Skadraki, you know, 30, 40 mile shots, just to send these guys cold, to keep them away from that target. Again, that's just a posturing shot from trash, you know, you can't kill anyone at 30 miles. Uh, so that's all fine. And we've gained air superiority, but essentially we've just pure numbers here. We've just, um, actually it's not even that. I think I talked to the Reds, uh, I talked to the Reds in the debrief and what happened was, because we took so long to get up, um, by the time we'd actually got up, the Reds had been up so long, they were all out of fuel. Um, so they all had to basically bugger off. Um, so there you go. That's just how it is. Um, <clears throat> right, so that's uh, so we've got complete air superiority now. Uh, now what you'll find is that we start having the same problem now. We're going to start running out of fuel. Uh, but let's run it through. Uh, so you've got Raptor, these guys down the base, they've all landed, and these two obviously are to be to land. Soyberg's found something over here. Oh dear, that's the Yak. Oh, Soyberg shot the Yak down. Right, and Tender shot this Yak down. Oopsie, that was a bit silly. Um, we actually forgot, in the briefing it was clearly said that there were commercial jets flying here, and um, somehow we all managed to forget about the commercial jets, So we've sh uh, and we, we just didn't know what they were, so we just gave the order to shoot them down. So that, I'm afraid, is an international incident for the UN to come and sort out. Um, that may cost us a few dollars. Luckily, we have a wealthy backer, so we're not too bothered. But uh, my apologies for the friends and family of the guys who died in those ships. Uh, sorry, in those birds. Um, oh, I should say, there's a couple of F5s that joined us. Stahl and uh, Tail of Daggerflight. Um, they've come in F5s, do a bit of bombing and gunning and whatnot. Okay, that's fine. Nothing's going to happen for a while. So Atomic and uh, uh, Sonic from Hammerflight have been released to go back to uh, refuel. Zoidberg, refuel. Ten days going back to refuel. So you can cap Stahl and Merlin staying on station to protect. Uh, we have no idea where these reds are. We thought they were still a threat around here or around here, but obviously they had to RTB cost of fuel. So, so be it. And there's another F5. Don't know why it took so long, but there's another F5 there coming to join uh, Dagger. Right, we're going to speed it up because nothing is going to happen now. We're just patrolling. Out comes some reds. Oh my god, someone just crashed. What was that? I think uh, Wolf Shadow had a, had a moment there. He must have had a problem of some kind. Yeah, you see he goes up then down. He's lost uh, pitch control in his plane. See that? Um, maybe a damage on the plane. Maybe a technical problem. Don't know what, but... Don't know. That's what it is. Um, Tail and Stahl are doing... Uh, Gun runs on the ships. I don't th think they're doing any serious damage, though, so we won't worry about it. Right, coffee's in. Got some action, finally. Uh, so, if you remember from the movie, Captain Signori spot the threat. Uh, we're going in to deal with it. I didn't realise we were so close to their fleet. I wouldn't have uh, given the order to attack if I knew we were so close. It's a little bit silly, but... So we've got uh, Captain Signori, wingman pair, sticking together. Sonic is... No one really knew where Sonic came from or what part, it, what team he was in, but he stayed and backed us up anyway. So, uh, signal moving in, 660 knots is perfect. Cop, uh, reciprocated by coffee, 660 knots. Um, everyone's a little bit low for my liking, but it's not the end of the world. Um, as long as you're roughly the same height as this guy, there's no not much point of being up higher anyway, to be honest. Um, signal turn away, don't know why, uh, but he made that decision to turn away. And that's uh, leaving it to Cap to shoot. And Cap's been shot at by coffee, 16 miles, and we should see a good combat turn now. So that's 6G. Again, I can tell him it's not... I knew how far away he was, and I knew this was going to be a threat, so... I, I did uh, a turn. Now, um, you'll notice how slow I'm going. Yes, that's very depressing. Um, unfortunately, uh, we were I was completely out of fuel at this point, or very nearly out of fuel, so I couldn't use my afterburners anymore, uh, which is annoying. I see is about to have the same problem as well. Um, so I'm having to be extra cautious, uh, just you know, staying a good 20 miles away from this guy. I couldn't risk anything at this time. Um, I'm still getting the uh, warning from this missile. You can see me doing my jinx and stuff. We're playing in fast forward because the action's really spread out um, and kind of slow at the moment. So uh, times four seems pretty good. Uh, Sonic turns around, doesn't... This is... That was a good key moment there. See how Signore and Sonic turn back without me shouting at them. They turn back on their own because they knew chasing after this guy is going to fall into his hands. He's trying to lure the, us into their Sam net. So the boys turn around. They're getting used to um, dying if they go and chase someone. Um, and that's the correct thing to do is what they've done. So everyone's done really, really well, including the res, apart from some error, uh, error at the beginning. Cap's in, head on head with coffee, man versus man, is Cap on a crank? I don't think so. Yeah, I'm on a little crank, coffee's head on, Cap's on a small crank, it's not the best crank I've ever done. And I've terminated the crank, coffee's put an ET in, 30 miles, thinking I'm going to be stupid, I'm not that stupid coffee, I am out of there. Low speed, tiny speed, but I I'm, I'm, can get away with doing that because I've plotted where he is and I know that missile's not a threat at that range, even if I go slow. So I can't use my afterburners, but 
I can still do everything I need to do. And just to make sure I'm doing, I'm doing some manoeuvring just to make extra sure because I haven't got the speed. So you can see left and right and left and right and left and right. So it's all fine, nothing to worry about. I had an ER from Merlin or someone who was a you know, 30 mile shot on a cold target, obviously silly. But it keeps coffee cold so, and we've got plenty of missiles. So why the hell not? These boys are heading in. They mustn't go in too far though. They don't want to be suckered into the trap. That's what coffee is doing. All the coffee is doing here, he's trying to suck us into this uh, uh, sand net and wear our fuel down. So while he runs just him down, we run all our fuel down. It's a good tactic and it works, um, as you see later on. Missile on, tail, tail responds beautifully, 500 knots. No, why does he turn in like that? Oh, fine, he, that's fine. Uh, <clears throat> I don't recommend doing silly maverick moves like that. Just turn around, let your, gu let your buddies take care of it. That's what teamwork is for. Um, having a bunch of solo maverick guys on their own just won't work. A, a team work is always better. I've said that enough times. Right, right we're going to slow it down now. So, we've got an ET coming on from Signore. It is a... It's okay. It's okay. It's it's a little ambitious, actually. Uh, coffee's on the deck. Signore is any Angels 8, so it's an average of Angels 4, 5, so this shot should be uh, well under 8 miles, 7.5 miles, something like that, to be a kill. So it's probably not going to kill. We'll see, though. Uh, Coffee's put an ER out. I don't know who it's going for. Maybe Tail? But no, that was the old missile. Uh, Coffee's put another missile out. I'm not sure who it's on. If it's on Tail, then Tail's in real trouble here because that is 4 miles. So Taz Tail put himself in trouble. And Tail got a missile out and a good missile. 3.4 miles. Well done, Tail, on his little Maverick um, escapade. Oh, God. Just, just beats that missile at the last second. Just sees it coming. That's real crazy flying there. Um, but he survives. He does survive. And uh, Coffee's got pain to contend with now. He's got a Papa 5, Aim 9 Papa 5 coming for him at, at killable range. Just runs out of gas, but. Stahl is coming in the background. No, someone else, sorry. That was Signal Ray firing an ER. That's a, yeah, that's a valid shot. Five miles. That could kill Coffee, actually. If he's, Coffee's worked himself into a bit of a situation. No. He's, uh, he's done well enough. I didn't see his peak G, but it must have been around 9G. Uh, fighter pilots know, or virtual fighter pilots know when to pull 9G, when to pull 6G. And um, I think he probably, that was probably a brown pants moment and probably a 9G with all the gantlet measures, blah, blah, blah. Uh, so he's beaten everyone's missile. Uh, Tail's going to put a 1.9 mile. That is just within kill limit. It, it could test coffee here. And an aim pop 5 for Stahl. And another ER from Signore. So um, coffee's probably papping himself at the moment. Because that is well within kill kill range. He's going to get hit. Just look at that. Just with the uh, the countermeasures. Just, sa just saved him there. Um, so he's in a real... He's got a... You know, he's angered the, the, the wasp's nest now. So, but he's doing his job. He's sucking us in. He's got to be real careful now. Another missile. Let's check that out. That is 3.8 miles. That is well within kill limits. Uh, 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 so this could be a kill on, on coffee here. Good flying for Signore, but he's not, he doesn't want really to get too much target fixation. He's got to be careful. Plus, he's got to watch his fuel. That could be a kill on coffee. He's not dodging. He's not dodging. Oh, oh he got him. He got him. He got him. Um... <laughs> not much coffee could do there he could have done some wiggling I like I would like to do uh, that might have bought him just enough time to get within Sam range I uh, don't know the problem is that Signore was in four point uh, was in four miles at that point within when you're within four miles it's very hard to escape especially if you've got a slower jet and his jet was slower because uh, Signore has some altitude, altitude and some potential energy to put into his bird good work boys good work putting all that pressure on and um, that's another one down um so we're kind of lucky that these uh, reds are coming out one by one. If they come out all six of them at once, uh, we probably would have got beaten. So um, that worked out quite well. Right, we're going to speed it up now because it's probably a while until um, stuff kicks off again. Up to times four. Signore is heading out. So he doesn't need guys don't need telling anymore. They know they've got to turn out and uh, regroup. Uh, Merlin. Where did Cap go? Cap's just... Oh, there I am. Yep, so I'm up on the cover. You can see, look, I'm having to fly at 280 knots because I'm slow. Oh, uh, right. We have action already. Okay. Uh, so, Merlin's gone in taking a shot at recoil. It's um, slightly out of parameters. Uh, it was 11 miles. It's slightly out. Uh, so these are angels. It's going to be about 8 miles for a, for a head-on kill. Then again, we've seen uh, recoil do some really bad dodging today. So, you never know. Let's have a look. See if he's learnt. 6G is just about good enough. 7G, yep. Now that's much better recoil. 7.5G, 550 knots. Yep, that's much more like missile dodging. 
Who the Racer, just a, I don't know what that shot was really, it was, um, it doesn't give any warning, so it, it was never going to scare this guy away, so I don't know what that was. Also, the Sams are starting to come out, so we're in too far now, we've got to start getting out uh, before we start getting hit by Sams. Let's speed that up again. Oh, is Merlin going to be silly? Is Merlin going to be silly? Oh, is, is, they're pushing himself a little far there. Um, I've gone a bit far as well. Um, I've got the sense to get out. Okay, so he's charging towards three Sams at the moment. This is never going to end well. And he's burning his gas off. He's got to head away. These two can't be in there. They can't be in there. Ignore the kill. Go back. Go back here. Go back here. So this is what the Reds want. They want us to suck us in. And they've sucked Merlin and Sly in. Like silly, silly billies. Um, so, well, we'll see. I don't think this is going to end very well. So uh, that's recall there. Angels 8. Merlin Angels 4. It's an average of Angel 6. And a flanking target. That is... Uh, oh god, so that's six miles uh, maximum optimal, and this is slightly outside parameters. No, because it's on that guy. Um, and that R73 is obviously way out of limits, assuming that it's for this guy here. Um, so, oh, we're going to have to backtrack that to do the proper analysis, and let's get it right. Do it one time, get it right. It's 11, 12 miles. It's too far out to kill uh, Uderosa unless Uderosa runs into it. Uh, slow that down now. Uderosa's put a it was a bad shot. Did you see his attitude there? It wasn't really right for firing a missile, and the missile's going to have all kinds of nasty yaw on it. And it's not 73 anyway, so it doesn't matter. Um, so, don't know why he did that. Sly is in here, dogfighting. I don't know why they because look how far they're in him. They must be really desperate to get their kill, because look look how far they're in here, in the uh, Sam site. You see Cap, Style, Tail, not falling for that bollocks, straight out. Oh, the Harriers have come in, by the way, but there's not much point in watching that, really. You saw it on the movie. Uh, uh, the Harriers, I should say, had problems. They had problems with a laser. If you want to know more about it, watch the debrief from the movie. Right, Sly's got to wake up now. You can't just fly towards a ship that's full of Sams. Not going to end well. Okay, Merlin's finally woken up. He's heading out. Oh, God. Really bad flying. Bad decision making. Um, it should have really been Tail's job. Tail's not a natural leader, as you've probably noticed. Tail should be all over this guy on the radio. What the fuck are you doing in there? What the fuck are you doing? Get out there. That's what I do to my men. Um, make sure I keep them in check. So that was the lead's job there, to stop this guy being stupid. God knows how he's surviving. Uh, so he's dogfighting with this guy, completely pointless, um, don't know why he's doing it, and he's got a eraser, six miles, that is a kill shot, as long as Sly can't do something amazing and dodge it, yeah, I don't think he can, he's out of energy, and he's dead, yep, so, oh dear, oh, friendly fire recall, right, so what actually happened there, uh, uh Rosa does explain it in the debrief, but I can't remember, so he had a problem locking um so he fired this missile then the radar unlocked itself because of i i see exactly what happened i'll even talk you through it i've been in this situation many times and um i could completely understand with the flankers iff why this happened actually so he's locked sly up he's fired the missile let's run that through further at a certain angle uh, let's find another missile scratch the first missile just look at this one so he's fired uh, the e uh, that missile there, which was the, 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 the going to be the kill shot, I imagine. At this point there, there Sly gets on a flanking um, uh, on a flanking aspect, which makes it tend to make it very hard for this plane here to pick this guy up. Why is that? Because the pole stopper doesn't like uh, picking up flanking aspect uh, uh, planes because it's what it's detecting is how fast the plane is moving towards your plane, and it's not moving really very fast towards your plane at the moment. Uh, it likes detecting planes that are going towards you. Pulse Doppler effect works uh, much better. If you want to know more about that, we've got Pulse Doppler um, educational videos in that educational section on YouTube, and you can learn a bit more about it there. Uh, so at this point, um, his uh, Uderesh has lost radar lock because of the aspect change of Sly. At that point, Uderesh has panicked. He's quickly reacquired the first thing he's seen on his radar screen, um, which isn't Sly because Sly's gone off his radar screen, which is recoil in the heat of the moment. Um, and he didn't check IFF, uh, so that was a little mistake there. If you're going to reacquire because uh, it was right next to where Sly went off. He just assumed it was Sly. Uh, but in reality, it was recall. He just needed a quick flick of the, the IFF button just to double check. Uh, in combat, it's not that easy, so I can. It's kind of forgivable. It's um, 
it is what it is, you know. I wouldn't, I be, wouldn't be happy if one of my guys did it. I would still give him a proper bollocking and uh, punishment. And Sly dying, Sly's been stupid there. He knows quite how stupid he is. He shouldn't be there. Um, so I won't drag on that. And that's friendly fire, and that helps us out. Poor old Reds, an absolutely miserable day. They're having a miserable time at the moment. All sorts of problems. Um, right, so that is that done. Uh, Caps RTB, I imagine now. Um, yeah, so we're all out of gas and we can't fight. I've dropped my weapons, Charles dropped his weapons, we've all dropped our weapons just to try and get home. Um, and luckily these guys weren't in position to pursue us. If they were in a position to pursue us, they would have just shot us all down. Nothing we could have do to fight them. Um, so we go back and land there. Um, Cap lands with exactly zero gas, that's how close it was, which I've got a knack of doing that. Uh, which is cool. Tower lands with exactly zero gas in tandem with Stahl. Sigidori lands with like 500 gas. Merlin lands with like 300 gas. So was, we were really cutting it close. We turned back just at the right time, which we're pretty happy about. Uh, we don't see the oil rigs. There's four ships. So the Harriers had a miserable time. They, they went out. They tried to do lasing. And it just didn't work. So they haven't done anything, which pissed Kef off. But that's how it goes. Uh, Skadrecki's up. Careful. Now, what happens here? Now the problem here is, is we've got one hostile fighter up, but no cap. We're all refueling or on our way back home. So it, it's an absolute turkey shoot for Skadrecki. It's a shame for him that he didn't go and just shoot these Harriers down. He could have shot them down. Or is he about to? Maybe he is about to go and shoot them all down. So that's a bit of a missed opportunity. Or does he? Does he shoot Static down? Static just lagged there. Oh, just in time. Look at that. The saviour, Zoidberg. He's just about to shoot Static down. Static did a great job of running away there. That was really good teamwork. And Zoyberg scrambled from the carrier just in time to get, uh, just to take Skedrecki. So that's excellent work. Well done, boys. Good to see that communication going on there. I think I remember that in the movie. Uh, Skate's put a cheeky ER and an ET out. Uh, I don't really know why. It's 15 miles away. Don't waste your ET. Zoyberg's not stupid. Um, Zoyberg had a lovely crank there. Uh, assuming that he's cranking. I'm not entirely sure, actually. Uh, put a warning shot again. He was just trying to warn him away from Static. Save Static. That's what he was doing. Right, Skay did a good turn. That's how you beat a missile. 180 degrees. Counter measures 600 knots. That's a good show. Um, Zoidberg is doing cheeky Zoidberg moves. So that is not how I beat a missile, but that's how he's going to do it. I'm not a flanker expert, so maybe that's what um, Rico was trying to do. I don't know. But that's not traditional for Cap's teachings anyway. But hey, you know what? It's worked. And he's now chasing the guy, so I suppose it uh, counts for something. If he doesn't get hit by this ET, and that's going to be close. That's the dangerous thing about not turning back and being safe. But, oh, Jesus, look at that. That was lucky. Right, uh, I'm going to scroll that forward because um, I don't think anything's going to happen for a while. Right, so Scale's heading away. Uh, Zoidberg's hot in pursuit, hopefully spiking him. So Skadrecki has probably at this point decided I've run away far enough. And yeah, he has. He's going to turn back into the fire. So what I expect to see now, but let's, um, let's see. So split S, that's the best move for turning back into combat. And a missile at Gumbo. Gumbo's down. Unlucky Gumbo, wrong place, wrong time. Uh, nothing Gumbo did wrong there. That's just how it goes. Uh, but Zoyberg is going to take this, uh, Zoyberg saw all of that, so he's going to take this chance to close in. And Skate's going to be in trouble here. Uh, and he's got to burn out and burn out fast. Don't take a chance, don't spin around in circles, just go out. Let's see a nice clean exit here. He should know that. And yep, he is. Good old Skate. Skate learns very quickly and he does what you teach him, uh, which is why I like Skate. Right, six uh, mile shot. It has no credence. Um, it does panic Skay though, and he's panicking and he's turning right, he's burning off just a little bit of a, uh, a head start, and uh, Zoyberg's used his potential energy from up high, turn that into speed, 760 knots, so he is closing, and Skay's got to be a little bit careful, of course he's got so far to go, uh, unfortunately for Skay, he's on his own, he's got no one to come and back him up, so if this was me, burners on, on the deck, run away, um, don't try and turn around uh, when you're being shot at like this, it's uh, not going well, but we'll see, Skay's doing excellently so far, he's doing everything he needs to do, Five miles, that's not a kill shot, so say just keep fast, keep those burners on. He's doing it right, he's not falling for it. Keep those burners on. Keep fast. I shouldn't be able to catch him if my maths is right. Is it right? Re yes it is. So yeah, that's absolutely fine. Six four point six miles with an ER. Now we're starting to cook on gas here. Um and Zoyberg's still much faster. It's a little bit of turn. <sighs> Reverse gay, reverse, reverse gay. Ah, oh, I got him. 4.6 miles. He was a little bit faster. 
Decent missile off the shaft. Scare didn't really do anything wrong there. I don't know what he's supposed to do, really. If, he, if he'd put some S's in, he would have beaten the missile. But if he'd put the S's in, Zoidberg would have caught up and probably got another shot. So, that's just how it is. Um, good kill, Zoidberg. Well done. Uh, it's perfection so far from him. Right. Let's uh, go through see if anything else happens. I can't remember. Okay. Uh, the bombing's finally started working. Uh, they get a... Uh, they get shipped down. Harriers finally got their act together on their second run out and they've started to kill stuff, uh, kill ships. And Trash is out there with a flanker uh, killing boats. Um, trash is um, just, uh, yep, that's fine. What he's doing, he knows what he's doing. One ship left and someone takes it out. And then um, Cap Signori, wingmen are back. See, we come in formation and we take out the um, oil rigs between us with Merlin's help. And that's it. We had home and RTB. It's a good mission. It was a shame we didn't get more fighting from Reds. Um, you know, we had problems that we talked about, but that's life. That's how it goes sometimes. Um, once we finally got our act together, really good bombing and good teamwork overall. We had a couple of errors from the Blues, but really good teamwork. And most people actually completely error-free from the Blues, which is incredibly rare. Uh, so it's really promising stuff to see. Uh, the landing... Uh, I know we had lots of problems land, uh, with the carriers, with slipping off the edge, but the actual landings, apart from the end when we were getting tired, were actually genuinely really good. Very few problems landing. Um, so really chuffed with all that uh, getting much better at naval ops so anyway um, we'll do another um, naval one soon and we'll see how we got on until then we'll see you later